We will now call the uh, September meeting of the Common Council it's to order. Please rise for pledge allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Could the clerk please call the roll? Heidi? Here. Linker? Here. Reynolds? Here. Campbell? Here. Brown? Here. Allersmeyer? Here. Williamson? Here. Downing? Here. Meyer? Here. Quorum present. Thank you. Approval of the minutes from August 4th, 2014. What's the pleasure of the council, Mr. Campbell? I move they be approved as communicated. Mr. Williamson? Second. It's been approved, moved and seconded to approve the minutes. Uh, are there any changes or modifications? All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. The minutes are approved. Presentation and disposal of claims. There are none. Presentation of petitions and communications. There are none. How about reports to city offices? Clerk's office monthly, July and August. Fleet maintenance monthly, July. Waterworks department monthly, July. Water pollution control department monthly, July. Thank you, and as a reminder, those reports are on file with the city clerk's office and available for your review during regular business hours. See, there are no ordinances tonight for second reading, so we'll proceed with the ordinances for first reading. The first ordinance would be Ordinance 2014-19. Can you read the caption? Ordinance 2014-19, an ordinance to amend the zoning ordinance of Tippecanoe County, Indiana, Uzo Amendment 83, Plan Developments. And what's the pleasure of the council? Mr. Downing. I move to hear and approve Ordinance 2014-19. Thank you, Mr. Reynolds. I like it. All right, thank you. It's been moved and seconded to consider Ordinance 2014-19. Uh, any comments from the council? Someone wants to present this? I don't mind giving you a brief uh, report about what the, this started about a year ago in an effort as you know the uh, planned unit development is a special category of zoning for those projects that don't fit into the, the regular categories whether that's R1 or R2 or the biz, general business and for unique developments and over the years and it's been a lot of years since the uh, planned unit development was ordinance was has been modified uh, they started about a year ago having ordinance committee meetings and got input from the uh, administrative zoning officials, the people on the area plan ordinance committee, and also from developers. And this has resulted in this amendment that is being recommended uh, first by the area plan commission staff. Uh, the area plan commission itself voted on it and recommended that it be adopted now it become, uh, comes before the city council basically what it did was it uh, created some additional definitions and created streamlined some procedures to encourage i think more developers considering a planned unit development as opposed to trying to get a property zoned r3 that they wanted multifamily. Uh, so that they have more input in terms of the design and so on. So it's a zoning category. It's been uh, uh, given some flexibility, but it still requires the same processes, which is you know meetings with administrative office, fine-tuning detailed plans for that particular development, and get going in front of the area plan commission, getting a vote there, and coming before the city council so that if the uh, just like any other zoning, if the city council doesn't like it, you can vote no. So it's really a zoning category for unique projects that allow uh, unique projects in, in maybe unique areas that allow for input uh, to make special features so that they actually will work. And and so it, it has a lot of uh, language in the ordinance. I think there's about 20-some pages. Um, uh, but most of it is minor changes and they've added some clarification that it's created some disputes and they're hoping to encourage I think developers uh, in using planned unit developments again and not coming and bombarding the council with uh, an R3 rezone with a lot of commitments um, because you you know commitments are intended to be more for uh, 
uh, maybe an R3 zoning that has commitment that it will not be uh, anything but market rate apartments as opposed to the the nature of the building in terms of it height, its architectural features, and so on. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any questions of Mr. Chosney? Our representatives on the APC, do either one of you want to uh, speak to this, Mr. Reynolds, Mr. Brown? No, no I think that uh, as we pass it in APC, it was unanimous. Okay. Are there any comments from the public then on Ordinance 2014-19? Seeing none, if there are no final comments by council, we will take a roll call vote on the ordinance. Heidi? Aye. Clinker? Aye. Reynolds? Aye. Campbell? Aye. Brown? Aye. Allersmeyer? Aye. Williamson? Aye. Downing? Aye. Ordinance passes 8 to 0. Thank you. The ordinance is passed. Is it necessary to have a public hearing on this particular so I'll take care? No, it's just a, it's an amendment to the zoning ordinance that just takes the one reading just like mm -hmm. any of, uh, of the other amendments or zoning. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right, the next ordinance for consideration, 2014-20. Ordinance 2014-20, an ordinance for an additional appropriation of local roads and street fund 2014. Mr. Campbell. Mr. President, I move for passage of Ordinance 2014-20, first reading. Thank you, Mr. Klinker. Second. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded to consider 2014-20. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen of the council, as we spoke about in caucus, this ordinance will allow us to move some additional funds uh, necessary to complete the road work uh, that we are doing this year. As you all know, we began very early. In fact, as soon as the week the asphalt plants opened, we had already milled uh, some of the roads in the community, particularly Casus Street there between Maine and 18th because of its condition. I don't think it's any secret to anyone that uh, uh, this winter was very, very challenging on our roadways and did significant damage not only to the pavement but to uh, you know even our subgrade in some of our places. So we've done significant road work um, since the early part of the year and we continue to do that. In fact, they're paving 18th Street uh, today and we got Ferry Street finished up. We're still working on Maple, uh, 11th Street and uh, two portions of 11th Street and this will allow us to do it. I'd like to thank all the crews uh, that have been involved. Um, I think they've done a marvelous job since the beginning of the year staying on top of it. You'll hear from Dan Kroll a little bit later this evening in his report about the skip patching that has been done, the pothole fixing has been done, the crack sealing has been done, along with all of the uh, regular paving that's been done. And uh, the engineer's office has done a good job. Of course, we did a big section of 52. Uh, so there has been a tremendous amount of paving and road work done. The good news is, with the help of this council, we have managed our money well. And we always keep some cash reserves. We look at operating expenses. We look at cash flow. And uh, so we have the money to be able to move to continue to do this. Also, because we are a growing community, the amount of money that we've taken in um, has went up a little bit. So that's uh, a positive for us also. So this will allow us to continue to do that and get everything we want to try to get done before winter gets here. Um, I would like to just tell you a, a quick story uh, that, I'm quite, uh, that I'm proud of, actually. Uh, we're getting ready to pay Ferry Street, and we were trying to get that done before German Fest. Obviously, two or three weeks of a lot of rain has made things somewhat difficult. And uh, at the last moment, uh, we learned that one of the buildings along Ferry Street there may make some changes in the future that would require a sprinkling system that would need to be uh, put in and uh, which would then require a street cut, tap into a main, certain things, so you can can do that. And we learned about wh almost while we were paving the road. And uh, with quick communication from our people that uh, watch over these projects, our construction managers and those things, got a call to the uh, water department. Water department went down there and in less than a day cut everything open, ran all the pipe, set a new fire hydrant, and got everything in before the paving machines got there so there won't be a road cut next year and a brand new road when they get ready uh, to possibly put in that sprinkling system. So I just wanted to commend everybody for their communication and people being willing to drop what they're doing to make something else happen 
that needed to get done, and uh, we'll continue to do that. So, again, as I state as a caucus, I'd like to state again today, this money is not out of our rainy day fund. We are not touching our rainy day fund. This is operating cash balances and some additional funding what we've got because we've, been, we've managed our money over the last few years. Thank you. Any questions? Mr. Campbell. Yes, uh, Mayor, not really associated with this particular ordinance, but could you bring us up to date as to what is expected on the remainder of Route 52 or the bypass, excuse me, and then we'll talk about 52. The, the bypass, what is, uh, whatever road it's called. Sagamore Parkway? Oh, that's Sagamore Parkway? Yeah, that's okay. It. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it was changed only about 40 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> um, as you may have been following in, in the media, uh, we have put out uh, the section from Beach Drive, which is down by the Kirby Risk building there just past Tate and Lyle, up to the uh, entrance to Home Depot. That section is out for bid. And I think uh, September 23rd or somewhere in that area is when those bids are due. Uh, and so uh, once we get those bids, we'll go through the normal review process and see where they uh, came in at and go through the awarding process. And uh, you will see uh, a little bit of work probably begin on that yet this year with utility relocation. We also plan to put a new uh, water line down that road before we rebuild the road, so you'll see some of that initial work take place yet this fall and into the winter, and depending on how bad or good the weather is, how much they'll be able to continue to do through the winter. So you'll see that phase begin. That is a multi-million dollar uh, phase of road, and that will start. Uh, the section from about 300 feet north of McCarty Lane to Tippecanoe Mall, um, we're still doing some right-of-way acquisition that Ed's uh, office is working on, but that's going along well. That You could see even that phase begin sometime in 2015 where we could have the north and the south end uh, phases underway at some level. So that work uh, continues, and uh, we have a website that will be up. You know, I think you've all seen the computerized fly-through that we've done, the digital fly-through, and we have a Restore Sagamore <laughs> Uh, campaign that will be underway to help keep old people involved and help keep them uh, informed as much as we can because once it really gets going, I mean, there'll be significant uh, changes in traffic patterns. Now, what about uh, Teal Road or 52, whatever it's called, uh, from the bypass to wherever it goes? Teal, Teal Road is still technically State Road 25 and still a state highway, so that is not our road. We don't plow it, maintain it, pave it, uh, or do any of that, that type of infrastructure work on that. But as a uh, part of the uh, negotiation process with NDOT, when we did the uh, Sagamore Parkway relinquishment uh, and re reached out or worked out what the fees would be, what we would get back in cash, part of that agreement was also that uh, uh, NDOT agreed to rebuild Teal Road from uh, Sagamore Parkway, all the way down Teal, all the way across 18th and 9th, down the hill, up 4th Street to the uh, new 25 that they did there, out to the new 231. Uh, so that process is underway. Uh, Alan Plunkett uh, came to a Board of Works meeting a couple weeks ago and gave an update for us on that. So they have started that process, some of the surveying uh, that they need to do. They've given us a preliminary design of what they think uh, 4th Street, where Teal Road comes down to 4th Street there. That's a tough spot. We were originally hoping that a roundabout might fit there to kind of some aesthetic value and move traffic, but it's just not going to fit. So they sent us a design that doesn't show a roundabout but shows the lane uh, <laughs> configuration. So uh, they are in the process of doing that. I believe he said that, Jenny, can you refresh my memory? It's a 2016 project. By the time they buy all the right-of-way that they need, finish all the design, put it out to bid. That's fiscal year 2016, so it would be bid. So that's all. So that's all part of it. And that's roadway. That's a full reconstruction, traffic signals, roads, and all those things. Thank you, Mayor. Now, isn't the 
Is there a sign up at 9th and Teal that the road is not 25 anymore? It says it's 52 or something now. Yeah, it, it's actually a re, it's actually a reroute of 52, but um, it's very confusing <laughs> because they, they've got it done and we don't have any control of that. Okay. But yes, technically since 52, uh, I still consider it part of 25 because you pick up on right. the part that goes out towards Shadeland, but again, that's that's up to them. Okay. But you're absolutely right because. We should make that clear. 52, when you come in from the south, down past the mall, that is still a state highway until you get to Teal Road. The only portion that's not, that's ours now, is from Teal to the river. So technically, 52 turns there, goes down Teal, out to the new 231, loops around the new 231, all the way on the west side by the past the Menards, and comes back into 52 in that part of the <laughs> county. But, but so even if it's not technically anything south of Teal Road, is still the state, but we're paving so down to the mall, down to the mall. You said earlier we only pay to till Teal. Oh, to Teal. To okay. Teal. We won't go. Okay. We don't. We don't go past that. All right. Yes, I get a lot of emails from folks in Illinois that uh, come and having a hard time finding their way on that piece. <laughs> <laughs> They'll get it. I would defy anybody to find their way in Lafayette now to the state in their, I don't know, I won't call it intelligence, but it's, it's taking all the road signs away. It's ridiculous. And until 2016, it's going to look like they've been testing missiles out there, right? Um, you know, they repaved part of it, kind of what, like we did on the portion of Sagamore Parkway to buy some time. Um, you know, whether we can convince them to do some more of that to um, try to buy them a little bit more time on another section, we will continue to have those discussions, but I don't want to make any promises. Okay. All right, getting back to the ordinance. <laughs> Are there any other questions on the ordinance? Thank you. Any comments from the general public, members of the audience on this particular ordinance to move some street and local funds to the street and local fund capital project? Seeing none, we will have a roll call vote. Heidi? Aye. Clinker? Aye. Reynolds? Aye. Campbell? Aye. Brown? Aye. Hollersmeyer? Aye. Williamson? Aye. Downing? Aye. Ordinance passes 8 to 0. Thank you. The ordinance is passed. Next ordinance, 2014-21. Ordinance 2014-21, in ordinance to amend ordinance 2013-36, an ordinance fixing the salaries of appointed officers and employees of the City of Lafayette, Indiana for the year 2014, excluding the sworn protective occupation and law enforcement members of the police and fire departments. Thank you. It's a pleasure, Council. Mr. Campbell. Mr. President, I move for passage of ordinance 2014-21, first reading. Ms. Williams. Second. Then moving second to consider Ordinance 2014-21. Mr. Mayor again. Yes, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen of the Council. Um, I'm going to talk briefly just uh, kind of in a larger scale, and then I'll have Claudine and, and Jenny come up here and talk a little bit more uh, directly. Uh, but what this ordinance does, I think that we all understand that the needs of a community, the needs of local government, uh, continue to change. And we stress that with our department heads that change needs to be continual, that we need to always look at our operations, our effectiveness, our efficiencies, what projects we have going, things that we need to get done, and how do we best facilitate that throughout the community for the service that we provide. And that's what we continue to do every year. I mean, those of you who have been on this council for a long time know that we continually look at our operations. We look at if we change positions. Do we change job descriptions? Do we change duties of those people within certain classification? So that's simply a, a continuation of that evaluation that we're always doing, and I think that's what we need to do. That This portion of the community here, we need to run it like a business, and business continues to look at their operations, and we need to do the same thing to be efficient. I would hope no one would want us using the same structure that we used 20 or 25 years ago. It simply would not meet the needs of the community. And so this, what this ordinance does, it makes some changes within two departments, the engineering department and the parks department that we think puts us where we need at this particular time. Um, Mr. Campbell just brought up, and thank you. We, you know, next year, particularly for engineering, and Ginny will talk about it, we could have two phases of Sagamore Parkway uh, underway, and we know that we'll have the old Romney Road 
uh, project probably underway uh, also and uh, out on South 18th Street, even though the big portion of that won't be taking place, they'll be uh, moving utilities and doing some things like that. So just just a tremendous amount of, of activity uh, that we need to help watch, just like the uh, example down on Ferry Street, tremendous amount of coordination required and, and boots and eyes on the ground to try to make sure that all these moving pieces um, get done. So uh, that's what we're doing. That's why we appreciate uh, your support. Uh, as always, appreciate any of your input and anything that you see in your districts that you'd like to take a look at with, with some of these folks. We're happy to do it. But next year is going to be a very busy year with, a, with a, some significant large projects. So with that, I'll bring up our city engineer, uh, Ginny Leshney, and Ginny will explain a little bit more in detail <laughs> what will be taking place in her office and why this change is important. Thank you. Good evening, Jenny Leshney, City Engineer. Um, back uh, at the end of last year, uh, we had come before you and, and in increased the building permit fees. We had we had talked about hiring a, a new building commissioner, and right uh, as that, all of that was happening, um, my assistant engineer resigned. And so not having that building commissioner position filled and not having that assistant engineer's position filled, we actually took a couple of months. Um, it took me probably until the first part of April to actually look at what our needs are going to be over the next couple of years and where the holes were in the department and, and what we really need staffing-wise moving forward. Um, with that, ex with the extension construction activities that are going to be happening uh, over the next two or three years, we knew that we did not have the field personnel that, that we needed. Um, traditionally, what happens is uh, Bob Foley, Dave Griffey, and myself, we have all of these construction projects going on and we split them up and one of us is in the field on each, in each project. But these projects, um, are so large and extensive and some are run by NDOT and some are, are local projects and we hire a lot of consultants that, that there was no way that the three of us could keep up with all the field work plus planning new projects plus all the private work coming in in-house. So we were able to take a look at what, the, what that vacancy allowed us to do uh, and, and really what I wanted is somebody that had some good field experience on how to build roads because um, we know we have four major construction projects, you know, 30 plus million dollars going on that we wanted people in the field that were going to represent our interests. And so we, we thought that the PAT-5 position for the assistant engineer would be better served as a construction manager in the field. Not only could that person be on, on maybe one major job, but they could also go to the other progress meetings of some of the other road projects that we had going on and keeping us and the mayor's office and citizens and, and utilities and all that amount of coordination in order um, for the duration of the projects. And then additionally, um, we knew that we, we didn't need a full-time PE to prepare um, in-house bid packets for sidewalks and smaller jobs. What we needed is a technician, somebody that understood GIS, understood CAD, knew the concept of putting together construction documents, but would work under supervision of, of the engineers in the office. And uh, we had, we, I do, we had somebody in-house that had those capabilities, but was she was working as an admin position, and I just knew that she had the, that ability to um, be able to move into that position. And what that did was, is we didn't, we didn't increase any, that was a PAT-3, we didn't increase or change any of those positions. Now the housing inspector, um, we already had both a building inspector and an electrical inspector going on housing inspections. So there were three people going on housing inspections. We also knew that as our new software is coming online, those inspection reports can be done immediately in the field. They did, we didn't have to collect all the data, have somebody come back, type up reports, and continue on the follow-up because our new database and our new inspection reporting, we're, we're going to allow those things to happen in real time with our, with our building and our electrical inspector who are already going on those inspections. That coupled with the new building commissioner to support both of those people, we felt like the housing position, housing inspection position was not necessary because those inspectors were already performing those duties. So we could take that position, create the engineering support position, and then have our, 
uh, construction manager position. So for no for no increase and just a swap of PAT three for a PAT three, a PAT five for a PAT five, we were able to get that accomplished with um, Julie's retirement in June. So um, we hired Randy in July, and Randy Loft uh, comes to us, a 30-year milestone employee, knows roads. Uh, in fact, he was our construction person, the superintendent on North Street when we were building North Street for Milestone. So he's very familiar with the city and, and the, the types of, of things that we expect during con a construction project. And then Lana Freestone was an admin position in our office, and she had experience in engineering firms working in CAD, uh, working in GIS, and, and all of those things. So uh, we've been able to fill those positions. Now we're, we're, we're coming to adjust the titles, I guess. Since we we didn't make any change in money, um, Mike felt like it was an opportunity for good people in the right positions. So I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Any questions of Ms. Leshney? Okay. Thank you. Thank Thank you. you explained it very well. Audience coming up. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, Claudine Lofman, Park Superintendent. Uh, mine will be a little bit shorter. I know Jenny's was very complex. In the Parks Department, we've undergone a lot of change, as you are aware of, and we are trying to streamline processes. What we have before you is the um, removal of a amusement manager position, which actually has purposely been kept vacant since late 2011. And those job duties have been reabsorbed internally. Uh, some of the job duties actually went to the zoo director position, which I acquired when I was in that position, and others were just uh, absorbed within other positions. And uh, what we are, uh, have decided to do to become more efficient and more effective is actually create a SAM 3 position, which is essentially a maintenance director, director of facilities and grounds. So this position is responsible for overseeing all the facilities and grounds within the Parks Department, and that will expand into other city properties as well. Uh, we feel that this is a, a tremendous addition to the Parks Department and will definitely make our positions uh, below that position much more efficient. Uh, this position is also responsible for overseeing from project management, so we anticipate seeing a cost savings there as well with uh, having to rely less on outside project management services. So, any questions? Claudine, uh, how many men and women will this uh, supervisor or manager be responsible for? Uh, currently, there are oh, 10 full-time positions and a few part-time positions, and then seasonal positions below those individuals. So he or she would also be responsible for all of the maintenance of, uh, of rounds, like uh, mowing and things of that sort? That is correct. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Any questions or comments by council on this ordinance? Any comments from members of the audience on ordinance 2014-21? Seeing none, we'll have a roll call vote. Heidi? Aye. Clinker? Aye. Reynolds? Aye. Campbell? Aye. Brown? Aye. Hollersmeyer? Aye. Williamson? Aye. Downing? Aye. Ordinance passes 8-0. to zero. Thank you. The ordinance is passed. There are no resolutions for consideration tonight. I don't believe we have any outstanding reports of standing committees or special committees. Report by the mayor. Miscellaneous and new business. It's come to my attention that uh, the budget will be, the first reading of the budget will be next month, but if you'll recall, we have to also schedule a public hearing uh, between the first and second reading of the budget, and with time restraints the way they are, we need to be able to publish the notice of the public hearing, and so I need to, I will entertain a motion to set the public hearing for the 2015 budget and the GLPTC budget, that's the city bus budget, both for um, October 9th at 5 p.m. Mr. Klinker. So moved. Thank you. Mr. Brown. Second. All right. All in favor of that motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. So the, that public hearing is set. Um, as with our tradition, we usually invite department heads to come forward and give us an update of what they're doing and what their needs and wants are, I guess, uh, and also update us with what they've been doing. So this this month, it's uh, Dan Kroll, sanitation. I need Andy's assistant real quick, or, or 
as help. <laughs> oh, you need it. I'm not very technical, so. <laughs> <laughs> boy, oh, IT boy. guys are. That's why you have the IT guy. Uh, are you bringing the screen down? Oh, yeah, down? we're going to bring the screen down. So okay. You guys want to Everybody want to step around. Yeah. Thanks. Thank Street and Sanitation. I got about an hour long video. I hope yeah, that's I'll figure it out. All right. Thank you, Mr. Cole. You're done. <laughs> 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 I didn't bring any popcorn. Oh, come on, bud. It's not going to be that long. It's a oh. double header on Monday Night Football. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Get on. I've, already, I've already gotten the crap from back there. Packers are tough, too. Go ahead and hit it, Andy. Get, get your iPad. Oh. oh, we got Apple TV now. Yeah, this is cool. Uh, is it working? Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll go ahead and talk. Uh, I just want to recognize the Mayor's Youth Council tonight. Uh, our four new trash recycling trucks. The kids uh, came up with the designs for them and the skins that were put on. And then we uh, ran into the problem of how we were going to pay for it. They're like $2,800 a piece. So we got the vendors to pay for it. And the Fowl <coughs> Chevrolet paid for two of them. Best Equipment paid for one. And uh, Mike Racer Auto Group paid for one. But uh, they turned out really neat. Go ahead and show another one, Andy. See how they work here. My favorite's the robot in the school. That's the robot. It's pretty cool looking. You go ahead. This is uh, Mr. Recycle, I guess. I don't know how they come up with this stuff. But that's also the uh, city flag is kind of incorporated with that, too. So it's, it turned out really nice. You go ahead. This is a school. I really like it. Show the next one. That's all of them right there. But they kind of just changed the look of them. Still just looking at a trash truck, so it kind of brightened them up. The guys just love them. Kids did a great job. But uh, I just wanted to recognize the Mayor's Youth Council and show these to everybody. And I, that's it. I'll go ahead with the rest of my report and turn the lights on, Sue. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Andy. Great job. I'm just going to throw out a few numbers here before I get back to their seat. Andy. Correlation there. Well, at the end of this last winter, <coughs> hey, Andy. <laughs> it goes off. You'll get it. You get blinded. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty bright. Well, at the end of this last winter, uh, we had the streets were really in bad shape because of the terrible freeze we had. And right after winter, I sent the guys out and they designated about 175 spots to skip patch. And uh, as of today, we've had like 113 of those we've got completed. And we've also done 53 patches for waterworks. <coughs> and we've also cracked sealed 17 streets. And I've done this with five less employees. I've held five positions open pretty much all year just because the previous winter just destroyed my overtime budget. So I've already got some jobs posted. I'm going to try to get them filled by the end of the year. So, And then i got to retrain everybody for snow removers. <laughs> But, and Carrie's taking a bunch of my guys too, but that's fine. <laughs> I'd just like to tell you guys that, you know, this uh, city has a great group of employees. I mean, I can't tell you enough in the winter how they all come together. I mean, I got Carrie's guys do the north end of town, Carrie Smith, Waterworks, and Brad Talley's guys with the water pollution control do the uh, south end of town, and we kind of get everything in between, and if we have really bad snows, Claudine got thrown into the mix this year, and she got her feet wet, but uh, they worked out really well, and everybody chipped in, did an incredible job. And even my trash guys, they'd get done with their trash routes, and they'd jump in. If I had extra chucks, they'd jump in them and, and start plowing snow. Incredible group of people. I mean, they're, they're really dedicated to this city. And you should feel, feel lucky. I feel lucky to work with them every day. They're, they, just, they just do a great job. Uh, <clears throat> go on here a little bit. Uh, we're getting ready for leaf season. We'll get our leaf machines all ready to go. Uh, salt prices for this next year have kind of went up uh, from $56 a ton to $94 a ton. Oh, my God. Yeah, so 
but we'll probably be using a sand salt mix just to lighten the blow a little bit. But hopefully, they did this to us a few years back where we had a pretty rough winter. The next winter, salt prices went up. The winter was kind of mild. Salt prices went back down, so that's yeah, to be expected. Also, in our yard violations this summer, we started out, we've uh, sent out about 1,000 yard violation letters. We've mowed about 147 yards, which that's about $29,000 and uh, just violation fees. <laughs> and we've got a few other the invoices aren't paid yet, but they usually, Mike usually gets all the money. So. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, just, we haven't sent out as many letters this year because of the uh, uh, continuous abatement clause that's in the ordinance now, which, which helps out quite a bit. So that's about it. Any questions? <laughs> Good. Thank you. Any questions? Well, uh, Mayor talked about the rainy day fund. I don't know if we have the snowy day fund. Yeah, well, that's what it's going to be worse this winter is what some of the, eh. you know, what that gets I don't know to be worse. Yeah. Everybody, looks, everybody looks at the Farmer's Almanac. Right. The mayor says there's an El Nino coming. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we'll be prepared. We'll just deal with whatever comes and hits us. Yep. Uh, you guys got a good good team of people. Refresh my memory. What happens when you mow the grass on an individual's yard? They get uh, billed for it. They, they get a lien put on the property if they don't pay it. All of those become liens on the property. Yes. And then that particular person cannot sell that property while a lien is in force. Is that correct? Well, the way I, they can sell it, but we collect. Yeah, we collect at the closing. Exactly. Our lien will be on that we property. We close. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Any other questions? Well, Dan, uh, please extend our thanks to your whole crew on behalf of the City Council because they, I think they do do a great job. And if you Thank think you. about it, most of the residents in the city, the, the one person that they, a city employee that they see regularly is sure. our people in, in, your, in your department. So I, they represent I, the city and we appreciate it. I thought I get two phone compliments a week mm -hmm. on just the sanitation of the street guys. They just do yeah. a great job. And also on that uh, big snow we had in January, uh, I was going to pick up trash, but the uh, transfer station was closed, but the next day we went down and plowed it out so we could dump. But that day that we didn't, we only missed one day of picking up trash, and Indianapolis missed a whole week. Yeah. Yeah, so, and that day that we missed, the guys just didn't go home. They were in dump trucks picking up the snow from downtown, hauling it off, so. Well, you do a great job with them in coordinating schedules, so we really appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, I got a good team. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, excuse me. Could the clerk be directed to possibly write a letter of commendation to the particular street department so that they recognize or that we recognize the work that they do. I think everyone in this council does, but I think that maybe they would like to be noteworthy and appreciated. Sure. We'll ask the clerk to do that. Okay. Thank okay. you. And uh, Mr. Campbell, I still call it 52 bypass, too. Cool, <laughs> <laughs> it's in the room nowhere. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Mr. Kroll. Uh, any reports of councilmen? All right. We, now, we are now at the public comment section of our meeting. This is where we uh, invite people from the public to come and address us with any concerns or issues that you may have. Typically, we do. I would remind you that we do ask you to hold your comments to um, uh, three minutes, so it allows enough time for other people in the audience to address us as well. So with that said, anyone who wishes to come before us is welcome to do so. Good evening. Jeremiah Dole, 835 Main Street. Thank you. I just want, wasn't planning to speak tonight, but in light of the road destruction discussion earlier, I also want to add my thanks to the mayor and the street department. I couldn't be more impressed with the speed of all the work on the roads and as how many have been accomplished this year. Thank you. Anyone else? Mr. President. Oh, hey. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> oh, <God>. <laughs> <laughs> Come forward, Jerry. It's your turn. Thank you. Um, I ended up, uh, I uh, I want to you know I want to do the right thing. I want to arrive. Jerry Pate is my name. I live at, at I live outside of the city limits, but I have property owner at 2219 North 23rd Street, and um, I 
along with everybody else, wants to try to do the right thing and abide by the rules. And if there's a change, you know, I'm going through the system to enact that change, and I'm willing to abide by whatever the results of the process are. What what I'm saying is, is that my dad, who's now deceased, he showed me how to change oil. He showed me how to change spark plugs. He showed me how to to change uh, tires. In, in his own driveway in the city of Lafayette, Indiana. I'm assuming that a lot of you people, um, council persons, uh, at some point had their father show them how to change the tires, show them how to change the oil, show them, um, you know, it, things that are, that are just kind of a rite of passage. And um, the, uh, it, it just seems like that's kind of what a father does with his son, like throws a football, changes a tire, changes a spark plug. Well, flash forward 50 years, I mean, I'm an old person now, but a lawful tenant in a property in the city of Lafayette was showing his son how to change his own tire in his own driveway, not a commercial enterprise. I have verified this. The property, a person was changing a tire in his own driveway, lawful tenant in the city of Lafayette, Indiana. That is deemed to be a violation of the of the uh, section uh, 7.06.150 and I have presented uh, I've, uh, you guys a copy of that letter that I got from the city and also a, letter, a, a proposed changing of the statute. Evidently there does seem to be some clarification needed. I mean my discussions with a few of the people here on the council indicate that there's a vast discrepancy of what they felt was illegal or what was legal or what was a violation of the ordinance. Some of the people say it's okay. Some of the people say it's not okay. All I'm asking is, is that there be a clarification made so that we know if we're abiding by the rules or not. Uh, it, the, I've read the entire 14 pages of section 7.06 and there's only one section that applies to parking on private property. Section 7.06.14 applies to the street, not a driveway. Section 7.06.120, no person shall park a vehicle on the streets or roadways. 7.06.130, first to public roadways. Section 7.06.140, so you cannot park a disassembled vehicle on a street, alley, or city controlled parking lot. None of these refer to private property. Only 7.06.150 of the entire 7.06 applies to parking on private property. Now that, sta that statute, 7.06150, does not state a vehicle cannot be under repairs. It doesn't say that. Yet that's what the letter refers to. So it, the 7.06150 is on your desk. It states that um, is unlawful for a person to store or allow to remain in the open on private property within the city any disassembled, inoperable, or unlicensed, or any junk wrecked or abandoned vehicles for a period of 15 days continuously, unless it's connection with an almost sale or repair business. Chair, I'll so, give you one more minute. You okay. Um, what I'm saying is, is that there's no clarification as to whether you can even change a tire on your own property. It, um, it, it. Um, I mean, I agree we don't want commercial spray painting or auto repairs commercially. That's, so if you read the statute that I prepared, it's quite restrictive. It's actually quite restrictive. Nothing in this ordinance shall prohibit the owner or the lawful occupant of the same property to participate in lawful repairs of his own car, including but not limited to changing tires, spark plugs, changing oil antifreeze, or other similar types of repairs in his own driveway for non-commercial purposes subject to existing noise and environmental regulations during the time limits contained in this ordinance. In other words, I'm working within the ordinance clarifying what is permissible and what is not permissible. In fact, uh, there's even been people that say you cannot repair a car in your own garage but the statute does say it is unlawful for any person to store or allow to remain in the open. So there's, it appears to be that you can repair a car in your own closed garage. 
However, I'm not, evidently not even certain you can do that. Okay. So I would like to Time's up. clarify. Okay. What? Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for bringing that to our attention. What I would probably suggest is we refer this to uh, the city engineer, or um, city attorney, um, take a look at this. Um, I wasn't aware of the, of the discrepancies or the perhaps uh, the perceived confusion about this, so I, I could ask you yeah, maybe I'll, to look at that. I'd be happy to. Look at Thanks for the proposed language. Yeah. Well, it's not on the agenda, so the proper way to do it is if there was going to be a change, then that'll be proposed and we'll bring it on, up on the agenda. But thank you for bringing it to our attention. I would add that uh, my dad did not show me how to change the oil. <laughs> we, uh, we were dependent upon horse travel <laughs> in my early childhood. He's the horse. Uh, <laughs> well, that's what he meant. There were some other things. That we were you taking your horse travel down the bypass? <laughs> <laughs> I, I would also add that we are the uh, legislative branch of the government. And uh, this, I think, would fall under the executive branch. And uh, so consequently, I would uh, once again underline what you said, is that the city engineer should check these things out and see if there should be some change in, in the ordinance. But we do not have the right at this point to change that particular ordinance. I think uh, one of the things, comments, is the oil change. What happens to the oil after it's changed in your garage, in your driveway? What happens to it? And that's a biggie because a lot of times people don't take the time to take it all the way out to Walmart or wherever. They dump it in a drain. So I think that needs to be considered. Antifreeze, same thing. I don't think there's much change in antifreeze anymore, but there definitely is an oil. And I think that should be a consideration of how you get rid of the oil. It's uh, not good. I think that's more about education than legislation because you know, uh, we, can, we, we, can, we can make it against the rules if we want, but that's not going to stop people from it, going ahead and dumping it. It is against the rules of dump oil. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, it, it, you know, that's, 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 that's what happens when you've got a lot of people changing oil and they're not going to... Yeah. I mean, I think what you're getting at is the ability to legislate good behavior <laughs> and, and common sense and responsibility. Amen. And most of the time we're legislating to the worst case scenario. Thank you. Anyone else wishes to uh, address the council and public comment section of our meeting? All right. Seeing none, Mr. Campbell. I move we adjourn. Mr. Klinker. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Yep. Opposed? Thank you. We're adjourned.